Hey, Darlene. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. Right? <laughs> We're back on Offbeat Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Are you excited to be here? I am. I'm always excited. <laughs> oh, man. I think. Okay, for real. Like, how have you felt about like just doing this series and just like even with the like the little clips that have been out? Like, um, I just want to break the ice. I guess you can you say like that. Ice? Yeah. Um, I guess a little not nervous. I don't know what the word is, but I just want us to share wisdom given to us by God, not. Yeah. from our own understanding of things right that's what that's like the main goal so you know we prayed before this so god's gonna lead us today yes um we've been um talking about our approach of how we want to come across with for women so i think we agreed on <laughs> what we want to do moving forward so. yep yeah so yeah we're excited to be here tonight and continuing on with our um in my woman of god era right <laughs> And again, we're bringing you guys topics, conversation. Um, we pray that it's just wisdom for you guys, is advice for you guys, things that have helped us. Hopefully it helps you. Um, that is our goal here today, just so you guys know. It's nothing to just just be on this podcast and just take over. George is like, I don't know what to do. Why don't you guys just know? It has nothing to do with that. Literally, uh, for me, like God, I just have been praying to God, like, like I want to be able to help other women. How can I help other women? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's just been staring in with me. I feel like I have so much to pour out right now, you know, and I'm I've been learning myself in the season that I'm in Girl. and just <laughs> yeah, just being aware of just things. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm missing targets or I feel like I'm not doing enough. Like, you know, because we we again, going back to what we we're talking about, sometimes those pressures, right, that we get that guilt, that shame, that mm -hmm. and. I feel like I just been in that season, but I'm like, no, like I am not like I need to be in my woman of God era, you know, <laughs> Snaps. Snaps. <laughs> let's start doing that for the podcast, Snaps. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I just want to I want to be able to just live for God, live for God in the way he wants me to, you know, because I know all the time what I've always said Everything that I do, I just want to do it unto God. Mm -hmm. I want to please God in everything that yeah. I do, whether if it's in my marriage, how I treat my husband, you know, how I treat my children, how I am with my children, you know, how I am with my family and what we do as a family and how I speak to my family, how I love on my mm -hmm. family, right? I think in every every part of me or even just speaking to people like how I how am I with people right like I just want to be able to please God yeah. in every aspect of my life but I know that I fail yeah. we all fail but that's why we're here that's why we should be women that help each other mm -hmm. out encourage each other yeah. right and uplift each other when one is down there you're a friend you know someone there should help you you know encourage you we should yeah. want that for each other yeah i i wish that i had more of i guess women of god in my life growing up because i feel like i would have been able to like hmm. handle handle situations better now yeah. i've done the dirty work hmm. of learning those things for myself and now that i have like i guess a little bit of wisdom um, I'm on my training wheels. I want to <laughs> share it. Wheels, I, like I want to share it with other women yeah. um, as I go, as I learn and as I grow more of a woman of God. I want to share it more with other women. You know, same thing as a mother, as a future spouse one day, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I want more kids um, as a co-worker, as a daughter, yeah. um, as a sister. Sometimes I fall short as a sister. Um, so, yeah, we just want to. I guess be better women of God all all around. All around, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to just continue on, right? We want to continue on the kind of like 
uh, where we kind of left off last week, you know, and last week or last episode, because <laughs> we're watching through the episodes <laughs> <laughs> for us is last week yeah. <laughs> um, is, you know, where we left off was about comparison. Right. We we're talking about comparing, you know, how we as women, sometimes we can we can compare ourselves to others. Right. And how comparison is a silent killer, you know, and that, you know, as women of God, that we should do our best to try not to fall into that hole, like literally like that black hole mm -hmm. that begins to mess with our thoughts, right? Begins to mess with how we think about ourselves, begins to mess with um, how we think on how we look, um, all these different things, right? That comparisons begins to just like, or even how comparison can make us feel how to treat another person, um, how to be around someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were talking about earlier, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you want to kind of share what you were you telling me earlier. Uh, earlier, um, I think you agreed too, right? Yeah, like, no, yeah. I, I, I feel like uh, every single time, it does not miss, more often than not, I guess, like someone tells me, oh, I thought you were like, you know, the, you know, resting face. And I was just like, <laughs> I have it, yes, but maybe because I'm deep in thought, but I'm really happy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they, I guess I come off a certain way, and it kind of gets, it's kind of offending, because I'm like, yeah. I'm nice once you get to know me. Yeah. <laughs> and she is, guys, she is, you know? And and so funny, you know what? I agree, I agree. It's happened to me as well. I've actually had people, like, tell me, like, after the fact that they get to know me, and they get to talking to me, and they feel even comfortable enough now to be able to share that with me, right? Where they're like... Yeah, Janet, I don't know. Like, I just felt like in the beginning when I met you, to be honest, I didn't think you're like this. Like, I thought you're a little bit more like just direct maybe or just like kind of like know it all or like kind of like stuck up. I've got like the whole stuck up thing. I don't even see stuck up in you. I'm no. like, how did they even get that? <laughs> I don't know. Like, and to be honest, like, again, too, like, I feel like because, you know, family genes, right? Like, my my mom, yeah, like, when you see her and she's serious, she's not laughing. She looks serious, you know? She looks serious. She looks like she's, like, uh, mad, not, you know? Not approachable. <laughs> yeah, you know? Huh? Not, not approachable. Yeah, not, not approachable. approachable. Yeah, you know, sometimes we can, right, come, come off that way, right? And I've kind of got that, I guess, but I'm like, no, like, if, and I think that's why I think I'm the one that approaches people a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Like growing up in church, I think I've always been the one to have to approach the person because I'm thinking they're probably thinking like I can't talk to this girl or something. But once I approach and I say hi and I'm just like, what's your name? You know, how are you? Like, oh, how long have you been here for? I don't know. That, that was a lot in church, you know, and and at the yeah. We, we hit it off. I think I make them feel welcomed and they're probably like, oh, like, I didn't know that about you, you know? And, but it's like, no, it's, I think we, ha sometimes we as women have to give other women a chance. Yes. We have I, to give other women a chance. We, we probably assume just because how someone looks, like if they look stuck up or um, if they look serious, like, I don't know. I think there's something about moms that look serious too, because we're just constantly we're thinking, thinking about what you're gonna cook, yep. about what time you gotta pick up your kids. Like, well, we're, we're always thinking. We're so. just tired. We're tired. We're just it's tired. tired as <laughs> you are not lying. <laughs> <laughs> but that could be from their their experience too, no? Maybe like, I think a lot of people tie, tie their approach to based off their experience, no? Yeah. Like, from their past I, from or their something. Pa oh, yeah, for sure. Like some other, like she looks like the girl that I had a, a bad experience with that by, That's you know, a good point. in school, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe in elementary, in middle, you're taking it way back, way you know? Back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, middle school, high school. And it's so true. Like that is so true. You know, I feel like, because how many know it's so funny? I'm going to repeat what my husband says because there is that mean girl syndrome out there. You know, right? That's yeah. how you said it, right? Yeah. There's like that. It's a there's this mean girl syndrome, and a lot of those mean girls um, sometimes are, you know, those I don't know, like they just 
think they're better than others. Oh, they kind of yeah. give the, off the vibe. The pretty popular ones. The pretty just popular ones. Yeah. 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 The pretty ones. Um, you know, because I've, I've kind of got that vibe before. I was never popular in school, just so you know. I was uh, the Christian that stayed just with the group, but didn't really go hang out with anybody <laughs> afterwards, you know. Um, they knew that I'd go to church. It's so funny in high school. Like, some of my friends are like, oh, I have to go to church that day. And they're like, oh, you can't just miss. I'm like... No, like I want to go. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. They're like, okay, you know. Yeah, yeah that's so. awesome because that's not the popular thing to do yeah, for young wasn't. kids. I don't know how it is now, but like, it's just not the popular cool thing to do. Yeah. Um. So I think that's awesome that you stuck with it. And you didn't give into peer pressure to like stop going to church. No, like I mean I couldn't either, but my, <laughs> my world about. Re- 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 revolved around it but i could have easily yeah but i think because of my convictions it's just i you know and i didn't want to i was okay with it i enjoyed what i did i think at my age i enjoyed going to church and being with those that are right other christians like me Mm -hmm. you know and just we would have fun to be honest like you know i would think church was fun you know because yeah. it was right babe <laughs> he knew me at a, at a young age so. <laughs> you know so but yeah i just um so kind of going back though uh with the whole like comparison and something that my husband like really pinpoint to me to us i guess the other the other day like after even our conversation that we had a lot of like uh what needs to happen or what kills comparison what can kill comparison actually it's kind of like what we're talking about too is actually just serving others you know having a servant's heart and um i kind of want to read the scripture the scripture of i think i read a little bit last week but i want to read a little bit more and i actually shared this scripture to, to some of the girls that I had a uh, i went to their life group and they asked me to actually share and i had the privilege to share at their life group and um, I used the, the scripture that I use on the podcast, but I read um, a couple of more chapters before it. And it says that, and this is Paul um, encouraging us to have the attitude of Christ, you know, because literally we have to have the attitude of Christ in order to not allow comparison, competition, whatever, all those things, our insecurities, right, to, to bring us down. Like, so he says in Philippians chapter two, and it's from verse one to five. If you want to go to your Bible and look for it and save it for later on, um, it says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Mm. Number two, it says, um, verse two says, then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other loving one another and working together with one mind and one purpose don't be selfish don't try to impress others be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves don't look out only for your own interests but take an interest in others too you must have the same attitude that christ jesus had so I think with this scripture is it's literally Paul is just encouraging us like in your faith or even if you're not, you don't, you don't, maybe you don't believe even and you're watching this and you're just like, I just want to learn. I want to see what it's about being a, a woman of God, Christ like, right? What it is to be a Christian. Well, you know, and, but you're a woman and you're, you're still struggling with these type of things, comparison, insecurities. You feel like other women feel like maybe they don't, go up to you for whatever reason you're just like why Mm -hmm. why you know well sometimes you know what it's like being the big the better bigger person right in in a relationship or whenever you're confronting someone it's just saying hi to them you the one go and go and um say hi to them instead give them a compliment hey darlene i love your necklace that you're wearing today it's so pretty you know (laughs) oh girl i love your hair a compliment a word of affirmation can go so far. It can change someone's just um, day for that day. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if that if you've ever experienced that yourself, but like just like to serve others, that's what serving others is about. Yeah. It's just loving others, being compassionate. He says, are you compassionate? Are you tenderhearted? Like, is your heart truly like, and a lot of things, it's like what when my husband kind of like was telling us, like a lot of things do come from our past, mm-hmm. past hurts, mm-hmm. you know, past maybe someone in the past another girl um 
maybe said something to us like mean. I remember girls used to tell me, I always talk about this, right? I, I, it's so funny. I always bring up like my elementary experiences, <laughs> you know, how sometimes my the friends that I thought that they were my friends all of a sudden just kind of like didn't want to play with me anymore. Yeah. Didn't want to play with me ball wall. And yeah, I'm thinking about an exact moment, you know, <laughs> flashback. <laughs> yeah, flashback, you know, and they're just but I was just like, well, why? Yeah. You know, like, what did I do? I was, I think I was beating them at that moment. They thought I was cheating or whatever. But in reality, I was just playing the game, how the, the game plays. Yeah. And it's so funny how another friend of mine said, like, you know what, Jeanette, don't listen to them. Like, you keep doing your, you keep doing what you're doing because you're not, she knew that I wasn't doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just them. However, they were feeling how they felt like that they were maybe like losing and they didn't like the fact that they were losing that's another thing a lot of girls are very competitive very you know and i think that's where competing comes into like of like having to be better than that other person yeah you know and it's like no like let's what i was telling you earlier we shouldn't compare and we shouldn't compete but instead we should compliment mm -hmm. each other as women of god yeah let's compliment each other yeah we would we will not hurt each other we would hurt each other less if we would just learn to compliment each other yeah and um embracing what the other person has to offer yeah um, i was in rotc at cal state um, oh cool i was a nerd uh, <laughs> in cool. rotc but I met someone that was like, you know, woman of God, very sweet. I haven't talked to her recently. She um, got married, and moved away. Um, but people would compare us because we both had very like alpha female personality in ROTC. And they were just like, oh, she's like, you got to be faster than her. You got to be stronger than her. And I was like, well, no, like she has her she has her strengths. Strength. She mm -hmm. can lift heavier than me. I could probably run faster than her, but we could complement each other. Yeah. So we ended up working pretty well together. Together, right? and yeah. I told her too. I was like, people was trying to put me against you, and I was like, no, I like you. Like, I could learn something from you, and you could learn something from me. So we ended up living together. Like, she ended up being like a good best friend of mine during college. So it's like taking that initiative to find out more about that person instead of right. Instead of just like giving into the peer pressure of what other people are thinking as well and that's so good that you point that out that's actually a conversation that we're having more about in our life group the other day when i brought this up like a lot of like uh, negativity from other people really influence us to how we see others mm -hmm. you know because of also again their past traumas their past whatever it is that they've experienced you know or or just needing to feel like you can do better you can do better and it's like no like no like she has these awesome strengths right here and and you know what she i there's weaknesses that she might have that you know what maybe i'm good at you mm -hmm. know and if we were to see it that way where it's like helping each other out like and be like you know i'm gonna lift her up in this in this way and i know that she can do the same for me in this way yeah. because i know i'm not good at this but she's good at this yeah. and you even know? if they're not reciprocating reciprocating i guess that same energy you could still love someone but from afar because you don't want that to yeah. um how you say like i don't want to use the word toxic but like intoxic no nah, yeah. intoxic yeah. or toxic toxic it, to, you don't want to be around the toxic environment of someone else that just doesn't yeah. doesn't end up maybe getting it themselves like yeah. or doing it so um loving from afar you don't have to like stay yeah. near them that's yeah. that's called being unequally yoked with someone as a friend yeah um so you know just love them from afar don't say any bad words about them and yeah that's it because we can all be civil we can all be cordial again being kind being graceful goes much longer than um you hating or you like hey. just haters you know <laughs> being mean or maybe giving uh i mean face or not even giving some sort of expression to someone i've learned that mm -hmm. my husband was telling me the long you know last week too like Jeanette, you can you can speak so more so much more into it you know because you do that mm -hmm. i'm just like but that's so hard to express i don't know you're the one i'm the one that's saying it so it's yeah. weird you know yeah. <laughs> so. but yeah it's it, it is it's difficult to it, it's difficult because you kind of sound like you're bragging on yourself yeah, you know exactly. like i get it like sometimes i even hold back but you know yeah like i was like yeah you guys speak into what you guys already do you know and i know it's hard you know to do that because it's like i don't want to but that's why it's like, yeah, I was, you know, reassuring her. I'm like, no, yeah, you do that. Like you always 
serve the best out of people, you know, and I think that's one of the things that really makes your women of God era so so special because it's like because, you know, kind of the reason why I had like kind of pinpointed that to you guys was because it's like I really feel that when you come with a posture of serving like you really disarm yourself mm -hmm. you know and you really disarm the other person right you know and and um because i think that disarming yourself first you know when it comes to um you know in other words you kind of like make yourself the kind of nothing you know it's kind of like that waiter you know mm -hmm. like that waiter like i don't know if you guys ever had that restaurant experience where it's like man this waiter's super nice mm -hmm. or this waitress she's super nice you know and it's kind of like it's very disarming like mm -hmm. it's very comfortable like where you know but on the other hand when like you've ever had a waiter where they're like just kind of like standing over you like come on hurry up like yeah. they don't tell you but they're kind of like come on hurry up on order <laughs> like yeah like come on you ready you're not all right give me five minutes i'll give you guys five more minutes i'll be back <laughs> but in other words they're just kind of trying to rush you you know yeah. and so the the you know it's just a way of disarming you know yeah. when and i really feel like um Jeanette has really been great at that like she really has you know where it's where she just serves and and it's later it's like very you know people that's why people have really been able to like come back and be like man you know i I really did misunderstand you. I really did misread you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I kind of want to share this and what he was saying um, about like serving others, because literally that's what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to serve others. And in his word in Matthew um, chapter 20, verse 28, he says, it says, <clears throat> for even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, and I think for me and like what my husband was like saying right now uh, about myself, because then too, like, it's funny at the life group, um, they asked us a question. They're like, what's something value? What do you think? What's our, what sort of value do you, do you feel like you bring, you know, um, not to the table, but just in general, like when you're around people or something like that. And literally when she was asking us that and what came to my turn, like literally that is what um i kind of like shared about myself i think that is like the value that i have because i did it so much in my marriage but i also do it with people i do with people that have hurt me that maybe they don't know that they've hurt me but you know what i extend the grace you know i'm still i still try to be there for the people you know uh, my f friends or family or any kind of way that i kind of show my support still like it's still there like i don't come off like standoffish or like forget you like you know what i mean like yeah. i'm still i still try to serve in how jesus would serve yeah you know of course like how you said like you can keep distance like yeah i've kept distance from people that are like yeah i don't have a relationship with them and that's okay mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean i'm gonna like fully like just talk bad about yeah. them or you know just look look at them like in a bad yeah. way like no and, you know? and in those cases um we have to remind ourselves that the goal is to live more more Christ-like. Right. Because once you start to think worldly, your trauma yeah. is going to come up. Yeah. The way your parents taught you how to react yeah. is going to come up. Your past, um, you know, experiences with others, uh, the way tre people treated you, <clears throat> you're going to do the same. Mm -hmm. So with all that, you really have to consider, okay, my the ultimate goal is to live more Christ-like. Right. To love others like Christ loved us. us exactly once you get into that mindset it's going to be easier to mm -hmm. show grace to right. love people from a distance um because you can still love someone who is treating you wrong mm -hmm. from a distance mm -hmm. um so once you get into that mindset i think just like it would just bring you more joy into your heart because it takes a lot of energy to yeah. to have hate, hate and bitterness, anger and yeah. bitterness and resentment that takes so much more energy than it to does give to be, love like i love you but yeah like yeah. no not right now or like <laughs> yeah you know keep your distance for now um but yeah yeah i agree it's so true i feel like hate and bitterness resentment it does take a lot more energy out of you than to just be okay with someone and mm. you know be kind to someone and and forgiving some because it literally it takes also like forgiveness it's a lot has to do with forgiveness to yeah. be able to walk and say and and just being kind to others. Mm -hmm. God, Jesus forgives us, you know, every single day. It's a, what his word says that it's a new day. Yes. It's a new day. And 
And someone was saying that the other day, I was, um, they were saying that like God says like, it's a new day. It's a new day. Yeah. You got another chance today. And it's so true. Like you have another chance yeah. every single day to start new. That you messed up me. yesterday. Okay. Well do it different today. I, I think it's so important to get familiar with scripture and something like that too, because once you feed yourself with more scriptures, you're going to remind yourself, okay, I messed up today. Instead of beating yourself up the next day, like, dang, why did I do that yesterday? Why did I do that next week? I haven't changed. But you, once you get into that mindset, no, today, it's a new day. Today, I'm going to make that change. Right. Like, that's why we need to be familiar with those type of scriptures because our thoughts can easily, you know, destroy us. It could kill us. Oh, yeah. And it could discourage us from making change, discourage us from... Yes. From, from spreading love, yes. showing grace within ourselves. Yes. Um, it can really kill us. <sighs> yeah, yes. and that's that's good. That's good that you guys brought that up because um because another thing is culture, right? Like culture can easily sway also women from, you know, thinking different, right? You know, mm-hmm. and I think that it's very important to know scripture because when you know scripture, you're able to filter what is correct and what is right Mm -hmm. and what you're required to do as a, as, as someone who is pursuing the heart of God, Yeah, you know, because culture. And I think that's what Jesus was so good at doing was he was able to come in into an era where like, let's just take the religious leaders, for example, you know, in Jesus's time, the religious leaders, they were very used to, people serving them, mm. you know, they were used mm-hmm. to having, uh, you know, they had a, 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 a form of authority, a form of godliness where everything was done for them, you know, it was like, look at me, do, you know, do as I do, you know, honor me, you know, and, and, but Jesus, when he came, he, he went totally against culture, you know, and he really served and loved on people and he really taught, you know, and to the point where like, there's a scripture that I found that I was actually reading today when I was having, you know, I was having some, I woke up a little bit early and I was, I opened up the Bible and, and, um, Paul was saying right here in Thessalonians, he's like, for you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the right but to give you and ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. So basically, like Paul right here was saying like, hey, like culture is, you know, he's basically like saying, don't go based off of culture. Don't go based off of your right. You know, but in other words, Mm -hmm. maintain a servant's heart. Like, in other words, show up for people, Mm -hmm. you know, show up for others um, the other day it was, um, I saw a post, you know, and it was, it was kind of sad. Like I understood the post, you know, what this person was saying, but it was kind of sad because like, in a way, like it was just, um, it was kind of sad because it was like, the post was like a very, um, uh, it was like, uh, they were being very vulnerable, very transparent. They're like, you know what? I'm, I'm, you know, basically saying like, I'm done serving people. Like I'm done putting other people first, like I'm done, you know, doing for other people, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm going to just take care of myself, yeah. focus on myself. I've been and, there. <laughs> and, and, and I get it. I yeah. get it, you know, yeah. and I think that that kind of falls into codependency, mm-hmm. you know, when we have a codependent spirit. In other words, we look for the acceptance, the, mm. the approval of others. Mm-hmm. So we do, 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 do yeah. for others. Mm-hmm. But it never came from, from a spirit of generosity. Exactly. You know, it never came from a Christ- like mindedness. And I think that's what we have to be careful mm-hmm. for is culture because culture does teach us that. Yeah. Like, hey, share my post. Like share, share my post. Like my post. Share my post. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I got you. I got you. You know, you do it for me. I'll do it for you. Mm-hmm. But then the moment we stop doing things for each other, mm-hmm. that relationship ends. Mm-hmm. You know, but Christ doesn't teach us that. You know, mm-hmm. Christ teaches us to like know like, you know, you serve because because of who I am and who you are in me, you know, mm-hmm. and we are here to demonstrate. And that's what like Paul was saying. He's like, man, I didn't, I didn't come to be a burden for you guys. I worked for you guys. I did. I, I basically carried my own weight because I wanted to show you that I wasn't here to see what I can gain from you. I was here to serve you, to teach you. And I think that's the posture 
that um, a lot of times men and women, but more in this topic of women, that sometimes like we can struggle with, like women can can kind of have that approach is like, okay, I'm going to give, but what am I going to get back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that you talked about that because yeah. for the longest, for the longest, I was very graceful. I, you know, understood the other person, whether it was someone I was dating or a friend, um, and was just like available if they needed me. Like I was very much like that. And then I became jaded, you know, from dating. So and I was like, you know, what? I am done. I am done. You know, this person, the next person is going to have to serve me. And I got into that mindset, which is very horrible mindset, by the way, into my next relationship, my last one. And my mom kind of noticed like a change in my behavior, too, because she was like, you need to bring the old Darlene back. And now I have her back and I'm like, oof. <laughs> yeah, like dodge serving. Now I kind of dodge a bullet. Yeah. yeah. No, like I'm just like, oh my God. I'm just like, dang, how do I let life yeah. make me so jaded that I was so selfish? Yeah, I think a lot. It's because a lot of the times, and with whole, the whole culture thing and just ourselves, just all comes down to sometimes our own expectations of people. Yeah. You know, and I was actually thinking about that the other day, like, because I was uh, I was thinking about uh, about something like that in, in regards to posts like when I see people posting like that it's how much it's because we expect things from people mm-hmm. and to be honest like we shouldn't really expect things yeah it's like what it's like um you know you want to be when you have a, a good heart right when you are doing things just with the whole, whole a good intentions and you're just wanting to be generous then you shouldn't receive right anything kind of like back mm-hmm. you know Awesome that they do something back for you and they're kind with for you. Awesome. But a lot of the times, like, I feel like we just have this expectation a lot of the times. It's mm-hmm. like, I, yeah, like, I do this for you. So that means you should do it back for me, mm-hmm. you know? Or they should do it back, I don't know, 10 times or, yeah. you know, or better the next time. I don't know. Like, you know, I mean, when it comes from someone's heart and they want to do it because they want to do it, then then awesome. Like, then Mm -hmm. that's just even more like a blessing. Right. But people, I think we just have to stop the expectations all all around. Um, I remember that was some uh, conversation that actually me and my husband would have a lot, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like he would just have expectations. Yeah, We we, we know all too well about about, about this subject. Yeah, You know, because he would have so much. I feel like even just between us, not even so much with other people, but I have so much expectation of me sometimes Mm -hmm. of like how things Oh, he would assume that what I should know and how I should know how he thinks. (laughs) And I think sometimes just friendships in general relationships in general if we are if we know someone we're working with someone or or having a friendship i think that happens even between us yeah you know yeah. that we have we have some sort of expectation that my friend should know that um you know i want to spend time with her instead of just texting you know like yeah. yes. you know <laughs> like, <laughs> like yes. you know like literally to be honest like i'm gonna share with it i think she wouldn't mind you know but i'm not gonna say who but i had a conversation with my friend yeah. you know because i just felt like you know our friendship was just in a place of like you know i just wasn't i wasn't yeah i felt like i've I wasn't reciprocating what I have been kind of like been there, how I been, had been there for her mm-hmm. and which is fine. But to be honest, because I think where I'm at in my life, I just felt like I needed though my friend, you know, being honestly, like I just felt like I needed my friend to hear also me out now yeah. where I'm just also hearing her out, but where, you know, I need a friend to also like be able to share how, what I want to be able to share and I felt like I couldn't do that because of where she was at, you know? And then just time has passed by and she just wasn't really like spending like like again, I've been more aware of myself growing, I think now in my age and just learning about myself. Like I love quality time. Me you too. Know? Me too, girl. <laughs> you know, I am not a texter. Like I can't have a five hour conversation over text. Like, you know what I mean? I am not that girl. If you want to spend time with me, I want to go on a, a lunch date. I want to go on a dinner date. Let's go for breakfast, a coffee date. That is my way of spending time with, mm-hmm. you know, like how I think of like you want to spend time with me, yeah. you know. And um, so, you know what? Like I was just like, you know, I talked to my husband about it and 
And I just were, I was just praying about it. Like, should I even bring it up to her? But to be honest, I brought it up to her because her friendship meant a lot to me. Yeah. You know, it meant a lot to me, you know, and, and I did, I finally did. I had a conversation with her and, and you know what? She's like, you know what? Yeah. Like, you're right. You know, like I haven't been doing my job as a friend, you know, Mm -hmm. like and she understood me where I came from. And ever since that conversation, I was able to have like a cool, sincere. um, It was kind of I didn't know how it was going to go, but I was able to have that conversation because then, too, like I didn't want to have this expectation of her thinking that she needs to know how I feel. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I think that's where we can begin to like that and then that's where those posts begin to like or we begin to yes. say things like that things like, begin to mess with your head yeah <laughs> so that's that's part of the reason why i kind of backed off from social media i don't really scroll too much at all really i've I been kinda, trying not to scroll too much I, either i, I right just now. like like my friends posts if i see them um but that's about it um i don't scroll anymore because this world i don't know what it is but you know so many opinions so many like wrong opinions that i don't even agree with but it could get to your head where you're, where you're just like yeah, you need to do that for me. And that's kind of how I showed up with my, you know, my relationship. But um, friends. OK, so I want to talk about attachment styles, <laughs> having a secure it. attachment style. Um, you recognize and this is not just relationships with friendships, too, that you're your you're yourself. I'm myself. You, you're allowed to have your own identity. You're allowed to have your life outside of me. Right. Um, and then when we come together, we come together. So like a, a secured person would have that understanding. Mm. So it kind of goes into like, you know, a little bit of our secu- our security and insecurities um, and expectations. I, I've had, you know, recently, you know, I didn't know a friend had these expectations of me and it hurt me that it hurt her because if I had known that she had those expectations or, or that I was hurting her with my actions mm. because she expected me to be different, I would have stopped. I would have changed it. So it kind of, you know, I feel like it kind of killed our friendship silently. Hmm. Um, So it's just like, you know, because she never expressed it. She never expressed it until until like after the fact, until after the friendship had died a little bit. And then we talked and now we're like building back up, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But when we when we don't tell other people our expectations, we die silently. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're setting up the other person to continue to fail us, to continue to disappoint us. And it's not fair because you're going to build resentment towards that person. Yes. And it's just like, how can how can I improve my behavior? Yeah. Um, This is for friendship and, and relationships. How can I improve my behavior if you're not telling me that I'm doing something that's hurting you? Right, right. So. That's good. Yeah, and that's why, and I think kind of going back to my story, you know, like, that's why I did that with my friend. Like, to be I didn't want to lose her friendship. Like, you know, like, I'm like, I'm, I say that she's my best friend. Like, I'm not going to have a best friend no more if I just yeah. not stop talking to her. You know, like, no, like, I don't want that. Like, you Friendship know what I mean? Breakups hurt. It hurts. <laughs> it exactly. Hurts like, I would, I, it would hurt me if I were to, like, lose her friendship, yeah. you know? And, um, and it's crazy. Like, we talked and she, like, cried, you know, she really cried because, yeah. like, she felt like, yeah, like, you know, and I'm, it wasn't to blame her because I know like me too, like I get my, you know, in my my mo- my moments where we're busy and this yeah. and that. But I think but even through the busyness, I would still try to make time, you know, yeah. Yeah. but that goes back but into having like a secu- the secure person, like being a secure person, like, OK, like and knowing that you're busy, like even like when you when I called you and didn't answer, I wasn't going to be like, oh, man, she didn't answer. Why did not answer right now? But it's I like, know, I'm like, but I'm like, she's a mom. She's like probably the key, like, doing like the key and pal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to play that. I, I said, know. You gotta play that. <laughs> have to play it. Uh, but I didn't yeah. get upset. But that's kind of like, no, OK, I know Jeanette is probably busy right now. Like she's always busy. I don't expect her to answer a random phone call. So it's just like being secure within yourself or like. Being and then when, when I called you back, what did I say? I was doing. What did I say? I was doing. I was, I was, I was cooking <laughs> dinner, but on a phone call at the same yeah. time. And oh my God. She was yeah. busy. Today it was, was a crazy day. It was a crazy day, <laughs> day today. But I, I like what I just kind of want to interject. Like mm-hmm. what I kind of like is though, is that that's why it's important to really uh in in our woman you know in our <laughs> in the, you know in the women of god era you know um again i you know it's just to kind of interject there i think that's why it's so important to develop not just any type of friendships mm. you know but to really develop godly friendships because yeah. when you do have godly friendships you know um you are able to 
you know, speak into them and they're able to speak into you and yes. and being able to have that. Because I, I think that uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is so important yeah. in those yeah. moments, you know, like where, you know, you kind of answered, you said, man, when you heard what was going on with your friend, like you didn't, man, this girl's needy or this mm -hmm. girl's this or this girl. No, like it, 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 um, it, it, it hurt, it yeah. hurt you, you know, like it, it, it did something, you know, like where it saddened you, you know, and I think that's because that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know, because the Holy Spirit is going to produce um, in us, right, the character of Christ, like that's the goal, right? And and it and in producing the character of Christ, it's going to produce the compassion, yeah. the empathy, the love for people, yeah. you know, and, and I think that's why... Um, <clears throat> kind of kind of the other side of the coin is i think that's why a lot of people that are you know christian you know and they go into relationships and they get hurt and you know they kind of go into a, a a space where it's like you know what i'm 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 done with people i'm, I'm not going to serve people i'm, I'm going to focus on myself i think it's because uh you know somewhere somehow like you know, they never really fully developed, you know, like what really God is doing inside of them, mm -hmm. you know, through those relationships or they never really learned how to have clear communications. Mm -hmm. And and I love that it, the attachment style that you say, because mm -hmm. I always think about biblically, like, how does that apply? And I think that's what Christ had. Like Christ mm -hmm. had a secure, confident attachment style to the yeah. father, yeah. you know, and, right. and he was, that's why he was able to, you know, he'd be like on the, you know, giving a big old sermon one moment and then boom, like disappear mm -hmm. by himself. Yeah. He, um, I actually like, since you brought that up, I want to mention it. Um, I want to start working on like a different project. I'll talk to you more about it after this, but like, um, we can have attachment styles with God. You could have an anxious attachment style with God hmm. um, where, you know, you might feel like you're going to get in trouble if you're if you <laughs> sin. It's true. It's true. Um, you feel anxious. You can have an avoidant attachment style with God where you don't even want to confront him when you <laughs> sin. Um, you can have a secure attachment style with God where you know that God's going to love you. Mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. and you have you're confident in that and you could tell everybody that and you could you know walk around and just know that yes i messed up today but tomorrow it's a, ni a new day mm -hmm. and i'm you know god still loves me and he's graceful like mm -hmm. you have that confidence in you yeah um so that's a that's a good that's yeah. good i love that i love yeah. that you you sharing that I, yeah that's what's so cool about like even the temperament yeah the like temperament? recently we, uh -huh. we're actually uh gonna be unfolding a series also we're going we're going over our temperament styles <laughs> and um yeah. and it's so interesting because like even in temperament like uh uh i i love this profile that we were able to do because in when we went over it with our with the pastor that that did the uh temperament profile for us you know he gave a perfect example he's like you know somebody asked him you know everyone has a temperament right he's like yep everyone yeah he's like so what was jesus's temperament and then he's like, he went on and he said like, well, see, Jesus, the difference between Jesus and us was that Jesus was not temperament led. Mm -hmm. Jesus was always spirit led. Mm -hmm. So, wow. and, and it's so mm -hmm. powerful because I think that that's one of the things with personalities and all these different things, like is sometimes we can get, and I was talking to my pastor yesterday about it. We had a conversation is that we can, when we discover these things, we can get so attached to that mm -hmm. and we can begin to unfold our identity in that mm -hmm. but that's never the purpose the purpose is just to know ourselves mm -hmm. and so that we can be better and then we can be better for our partner our family yeah. etc and we but sometimes we can make the mistake it, you know and even with therapy sometimes we can make the mistake of you know just kind of victimizing ourselves and folding into that and molding ourselves into that identity mm -hmm. when it's like that's not the purpose the purpose eventually is not to be temperament led or personality led it's to be spirit led mm -hmm. yeah. but when you understand what your style is then you're able to control like jesus he would he had when he was angry, he knew when to be angry, you mm -hmm. know, he knew when to flip the tables, he knew when to go into the temple and say, boom, boom, like, mm -hmm. you know, he knew when to isolate himself, yeah, you know, one. he knew when to be, you know, in the crowd, mm -hmm. you know, he knew when to um, speak when spoken, he knew to be quiet when he needed to be quiet, you know, and so, and I think that just goes to show like where um, I think sometimes again, like we, we're discovering ourselves, but we're never really 
giving ourselves the opportunity to be like, okay, God, like, who am I in you? Right. Like, who am I in you? This personality, my traumas, my experiences with people, with relationships, all of these different things, all of these factors that have made me now, okay, God, like, what do I need to unleash? What do I need to unfold? What, what, what? Do you need to deal with inside of me? Right. You know what I mean? Because I want to be able to bring out the best out of me for other people. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to just, um, yeah, bring down those expectations and, <laughs> <laughs> and you know. But that's us having control, wanting to have control yeah. of things too. But that was a topic that we got. Yeah. That we wanted to, to get into at some point. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, we won't go into that not right now. Not today. Not that today. would be not a whole today. topic in itself. Yeah, <laughs> we are. That's a whole topic in itself. But I think it all comes down to us, like, um, how George was saying, like, our identity in Christ. Like, yeah. you know, um, knowing who we are in Christ. You know, and if you're someone also that's listening to this and you're like, you're brand new to this uh, this podcast, you know, you're listening to our conversation, you're just like, well, I just don't, I can't relate or I want something like that. I, I, like how, like, you know what I mean? I, I just encourage you to just start reading the Bible, you know, I start with the easiest, I think to me, the easiest book and the, the coolest book sometimes it can be Proverbs or Psalms, yeah. you know, <laughs> to be honest and just start going based on what it's saying there and what, the, and just the encouragement a lot of the times that it brings, you know, and finding a church, you know, or finding someone, I'm pretty sure, you know, someone that's Christian, you know, like, and maybe connect with someone or connect with us, you know, and, um, cause I do think about, about that too, like, um, where it's like, we're talking to women to that women that are Christian and helping them. Right. We want to help you guys and to continue walking in your women of God era, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping your heads up high, you know, and just being firm, being grounded in, in God's word and in God's love upon you. Right. And in your identity with him, because that's truly what it comes down to. And. But I want to encourage everybody else that's also listening to this and you're coming across this page like just, you know, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. Jesus sees you. He knows your heart. He knows what what you have been through, you know, from he knows you from um, before you were even in your mother's womb, as the word says, you know, and he knows all the specks of hair that you have on your head. Like, who knows that? You know what I mean? Like, God knows who you are and who what your potential is, what your gift is, you know, what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, because we do, we have weaknesses, but see, that's why God did not create us to do life alone. Mm -hmm. My husband always tells people that. And I love that, that we get, we, that he shares that with people. Like we are not meant to do life alone. You know, you have weakness, um, strengths that I don't have. Again, going back to that. And we should be able to compliment each other, encourage mm -hmm. one another, and lift with, uplift one another, blah, uplift one another with mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and not be ashamed. Yeah. Cause uh, I think a bit embarrassment can kind of come in. You know, and well, I don't want to share my weakness or I don't want to share that I can't do it. I want to say that I can do it. And it's like, no, like, it's OK mm -hmm. if you can't do that, if you can't make it happen, if you don't know how to do a do it yourself type of thing, like it's OK, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but maybe someone can or you can find another way. Like, you know, yeah. so let me let me ask you guys something, um, because I think one of the biggest misconceptions, right, that um especially for someone who is barely getting into church or mm -hmm. barely getting into Christianity or maybe barely gave their life to Christ is here's the truth that a lot of people won't tell you mm -hmm. is before things get better, sometimes they get worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want, can, I want you guys to kind of like go into that because I think that's what scares a lot of people is yeah. there when they, because you without Christ, you, not to say that everyone that without Christ lives recklessly, you know, mm -hmm. it's not to say that there's yeah. people that have it together, mm -hmm. but you're, there's a level of unawareness, mm -hmm. you know, without Christ. Mm -hmm. um, once you come into Christ, there's a whole new level of awareness. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I 
grew up in a church, but there was you know, the, I grew up in a church on and off. Like when my parents um, divorced, I, we stopped going to church for a while. And during that time, I was like, man, I wish there was like a life manual. <laughs> <laughs> and then now that I'm older, I was like, it's the Bible. Like, <laughs> but, um, so the way I, I the way I see it when you start going to church is that. You know, it reminds me, um, I'm in the Army Reserve. Um, it re- reminds me of boot camp because the drill sergeants, their goal, and they, they let us know that their goal is to tear us down to build us back up. Ooh. Tear down um, what we used to know. Tear I down our that. old personality, our, our weak that, or tear down our weaknesses mm. so that they could build us up to be stronger and have a stronger mm-hmm. personality. That's dope. So yeah. I think that's how I see Christianity. Like you are going to be convicted. You're going to walk in to have this overwhelming feeling mm-hmm. of like, oh my God, like I don't belong here. But mm-hmm. then you know, you're going to, you're going to feel convicted. Mm -hmm. It's going to, it's going to feel ugly. You're going to have spiritual warfare. Um, you're going to feel, you know, all this guilt and like ugliness, but I encourage you to keep going to church and surround yourself with people who's going to pray with you. That's going to understand because not everyone's going to understand that feeling that like Mm -hmm. that gross feeling that you get when you first start going to church. Mm -hmm. Um, it's important to continue to continue going so that, you know allow allow for those old habits to to um go away so that you could come back stronger and it's going to be a constant fight it's always going to be a constant fight you're always going to have you know the devil trying to um distract you or tear you down but that's why you have to keep going have um you know fellowship um have um other christian friends who can who can mentor you i always recommend someone to have um I guess someone um, that's more of a mature Christian you are to mentor you during those mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And just keep on going to church. Yeah. I love that. I love that analogy. That's mm-hmm. a really dope analogy because that's exactly, you know, I, I used to be in, um, you know, for those that know my testimony, I went into a recovery home when I was 18 years old and, you know, I really got to experience and see a lot of people really get broken down, like really get torn down because, you know, like the ugliness would come out of us, you know, of all of us, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and anyone knows, like, if you know someone that has battled addiction, that has battled with gang violence that has come from that life knows that man, you battle demons, like some big, 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 big demons. And you're never aware of how big those issues are until you actually stop doing what you're doing. And, um, and I feel like that's why a lot of people in that are, you know, there's a term that's like, you know, baby Christians, you know, when you're you're, you're in that baby stage, you know, and you're literally um, basically being spoon fed, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and I think that that's one of the biggest struggles is being able to deplete yourself of everything, you know, and be open to say like, OK, God, like here is my life, you know, and and I understand that there's going to be moments that they're going to feel like they're getting worse, but it's because you're producing something inside of me. You know, uh, we're listening to a message um, for the last two, three days, uh, Pastor, I think it was Pastor Robert Madhu, right? Mm-hmm. And it was like, it hurts so good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a message about it hurts so good. And and that's exactly what he's talking about. And, and he's talking about how there's pain, the pain of discipline sometimes that's being produced inside of us. You know, not everything that hurts is going to produce a negative effect. Right. And um, and then also I love what you said, like knowing spiritual warfare, like knowing that, you know, we li- you literally we literally like the day we accept Christ, man, you know, we're saying no to culture. We're saying no to the devil. We're saying no to the our old life. We're saying no to our old ways. And there's going to be a battle. There is different I guess, components of spiritual warfare. It could be mental. Mm -hmm. um you could have maybe like old habits you know like all of a sudden creep up um what else you could have conflict in your relationship you could have it could start affecting you um your physical health um it it could affect you in different areas so get familiar what a spiritual warfare is um for those who don't know yeah Mm -hmm. you want to add anything to that man um no yeah i think i mean it's I think for me, like it's a little different. Well, I've I've I know like I've worked with people like coming into the church. Right. Um, that are new and stuff for me myself. Like I've been in church all my life, so I can't really say 
like um we can't really like i guess speak on that i feel like you kind of gave like a really good um you know with your analogy of just rotc and just also because i, I bet you yourself kind of like going in and out and mm -hmm. not sure mm -hmm. you know um but I, I can just say this like yeah kind of going with darling what she says like i think the main the big importance is like surrounding yourself with people i think that is a big thing i think for me even like with our transition right now like of going to a different church and not knowing how things are how things how people are you know because it's just also a different it's a diff different type of people you know so i think sometimes fear gets to us you know i think a lot of it is just the fear of like what people how are people gonna see you how are people gonna think of you you know especially if you come whatever your background is and you're just starting off like you know mm -hmm. and you do like i think a lot of our guilt from our past or our sin um just really begins to like uh, deteriorate us or make us feel less because i think a lot of people who go to church they probably a lot of people think that the christians there they're gonna think well they think they're better than me and you know what let me just tell you that that is not true yeah because people who still go to church are just as messed up as mm -hmm. you. It's a hospital. You know? yeah. It's it, literally, they, it's like a, they say, it's a hospital. It's a hospital. People yeah. are still working on themselves. Because remember, we are not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we are all still, even after we have given our life to Christ and we have surrendered our lives, like we're still sinners. You know, that doesn't change because we make mistakes every mm -hmm. day, you know, because our thoughts lead us to mm -hmm. thoughts that we shouldn't be thinking about, you uh -huh. know, and that that in itself, you know, we all deal with it. Whether if you've been a Christian for 50 years, 20 years, a baby Christian barely coming in, we are all still. Oh, man. Did I write it down? She gave this awesome um she gave this awesome scripture, but she, it's a scripture, Philippians. Um, let me go to it. I think I did write it down. Philippians 1, 6. Mm -hmm. It talks about how we are just. Um, so it says, I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that w the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of the lord jesus christ so pretty much is stating that you're always going to be in a process you know doesn't matter how many years you have been saved or not or you're barely just coming into wanting to know god and wanting to have a relationship with him does it from beginning or till end whatever like you're still gonna be in a process of maturing why because we are not perfect people we make mistakes every day um i make mistakes every yeah. day you know sometimes i mess up on how i speak to my kids mm -hmm. you know how i yell at them mm -hmm. how i discipline them you know i mess up sometimes that i don't message people back you know they're probably thinking that i don't i'm not thinking about them i don't know like you know <laughs> i mess up sometimes the way i think sometimes the thoughts that come into yeah. my mind of how i'm feeling about myself how i think of myself Oh, and she said another good thing. We're going to be having her soon on the episode. So she said, like, stop tearing down what God has created. Stop putting down what God has created. And you know what? God has created you in his image. You know, so stop tearing down. So meaning stop telling yourself you are worthless because God created you. Stop, stop putting guilt on yourself because God made you. You know, he made you with a purpose. He made you with a plan. He knows who you are and he just wants to see you do good. He just wants to see you, you know, be uplifted and and have all those burdens that you have on your shoulders of your past traumas, of your past hurts, of whatever. Like he just wants you to be able to release that to him. You know, it says that in the word to just cast your cares unto me, you know, and he's there to uplift us. He's there to give us rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's literally what he wants to do. And that's why he loves you. And that's why he he wants to be there for you. So don't be discouraged, but be encouraged today. And that's why 
you gotta be in your woman of God area. Yeah. <laughs> <Era. Yes. laughs> so sorry, man. <laughs> she, on. I, was, I, was I get it from you. <laughs> I was gonna, she was preaching. Look, okay. So we for, we forgot to pray last last episode. Um, and we prayed and I, today. Yeah, we prayed today. God moved. You know, we're snapping because God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to, um, I guess, share this this verse. Um, Psalm 139, verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and, wonder- and wonderfully made. Yes. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I think that's a good yes. comeback. Love whenever it. Yes. someone starts to tear you down, whenever you start having those negative thoughts yes. about yourself, just yes. be like, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You cannot yes. tell me otherwise yeah. because God said, yes. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Excuse me. Yes. Pray yes. that. Let that be a prayer. Let that be a reminder to you every single day. And I want to, I don't know if I shared the, this is a scripture that I shared last week. I know I shared a scripture with you guys at the end. But again, I'll read it again if it is the same one. I don't know. Isaiah 41? No. No, it's Deuteronomy. Okay, then I did it. (laughs) It's Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. It says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord Mm -hmm. will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. So pray that over your life. Be like, God, you said in your word Mm -hmm. that you will go before me. You are ahead of me that you will not fail me nor abandon me. You know, and just remind yourself of that. Like, you know what? God, it, God that's God's word. Yeah. That's God speaking. And that is true when you believe in it and when you trust in it. Yeah. And when you are grounded in his word, he yeah. will not fail you. And during the struggle, believe me, we all struggle. We all go through it. We all have our pains. And you know what? But when you pray, when you seek him, when you surround yourself, when you surround yourself with other people that are going through it, and, you know, just when you go to church and you go lift up your hands, believe me, it will change. Mm -hmm. Your mindset will change. Your day will get better. You know, when you ask someone to pray for you, your day will get better. And it just it just gets better. You don't stay in that same mindset. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. No, and I think that that's why, especially for for women that are, you know, maybe barely starting to go to church, you know, barely getting their feet wet in church, maybe barely gave their lives to Christ is it that really is big is is little by little, you know, faith is like a muscle, you know, and you have to exercise it little by little. But yeah. the best way that you're going to exercise mm-hmm. it is in community, mm-hmm. you know, being in community being around other like-minded people and and just and don't be discouraged when things do feel like they're getting worse mm-hmm. because there is something being produced inside of you right. you know and and again I really like to bring that out because I feel that there there always has been that misconception is that man once I give my life to Christ you know everything is going to be better and a lot of times that's not always the situation yeah. that's not always the case you know um you know but we can't forget the fundamental that Christ died for us, you know, and I think that that's one of the things that a lot of times we miss is the fundamental, the fundamental foundation of being a Christian, which is I was a sinner. Mm -hmm. I was doomed because of my sin, because God is not, cannot go contrary to his word. And because of sin, I am condemned to eternal separation from Christ Mm -hmm. because he hates me. No, because he hates sin. And so we have to understand that the greatest gift, regardless of what we go through, the greatest gift has already been given to you, which is the gift of salvation. Yeah. You know, so. Amen. Mm Wow. You know, we just want to, I think we had a great conversation. What do you think? What do you think? I think so too. It, it wasn't supposed to go this route. I know. It, ha- it was a completely different subject. Yeah. Completely different. But um, we stood. Uh, we stood on this topic. So. It, was, it was good. I think it was a good part. I think yeah, it was a good, good part two. I think it really sealed part yes. one. It yes, did. I think it did. It did. I, I feel very confident. Yes, me yeah, too. With me what too. We I hope today. you guys feel more confident. And compared to the first episode, um, yeah, I think we gotta just pray more. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta pray. 
I praying? It made a difference. <laughs> it made a difference. I think God just like, okay, like, yep, I'm here. Yeah. Wisdom, wisdom, yeah, wisdom. Yeah, yeah. But thank you guys for listening. We hope that you guys are encouraged tonight. I mean, encouraged by listening to the, I don't know why it's so hard, but mm-hmm. encouraged by listening to this uh, episode, you know, and don't give up. God loves you. Um, again, if you are wanting information, even if you're listening through these clips and or th- through YouTube, whatever it is, through the podcast on Apple or Spotify, reach out to us. Mm-hmm. You know, reach out to us. Um, go through, go to the Offbeat Podcast Instagram, and usually me and Darlene are gonna be tagged on there mm-hmm. with the the clips and stuff from the episode. So we're more than willing to have a coffee date with y'all yes. you know if you're in the area or a chat whatever it is follow us you know message us on instagram and say you know what i've watched your episode and i just you know let us know what you think mm-hmm. you know and if there's something that you would love for us to also talk about share with us so that mm-hmm. we can have like maybe prepared to with within the other episodes that we're gonna have yeah but just keep walking keep walking in your woman of god era keep your heads up high do you want to say also something yeah so the, the goal of this is you know just to build a community so like yep. you said um like Jeanette said reach out to us like we want to meet more women, women of god we're, yeah. we're in our women of god era. era we want to make these t-shirts we want to make these leatherman jackets okay like Come we, on. we want to we want to build a community that's the goal and little, i would love little to pink meet. ladies yes yes <laughs> yep. we're gonna have our little light right here <laughs> right? I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, pray that we can all meet um, yes. whoever has been, you know, following us yes. and, you know, reach out to us. I want to talk to more Christian women. Yes. Um, I want to be too. more feminine. I want to be in my feminine era as well. <laughs> so I think being around more women will help <laughs> with that. Um, yeah, yeah, reach totally. out. I think me, like personally, like that I've been more around women, especially women of God. I'm getting more connected within my church, you mm-hmm. know, and just making myself available. I think it has just changed so much for me recently, you know, and I love it. I love it. You know, I'm just a person that likes to be around people. So but if you're not, I still encourage you to do it. You know, it's yeah. still going to help you no matter what. But we're off the podcast and keep following, share, subscribe, um, hit like, you know, if you like it, comment something, comment fire, hearts, whatever you want to do, <laughs> you know, put something there that just t- um, touched your heart. Um, comment on there that something that touched your heart. That's what I meant. And <laughs> we will see you for the next one. All right. Have a great one. We're out.